Hey, what is up fellow cynics? I hope you're all doing fantastic. So, whether you are just getting into the PC gaming world or you've been in it for quite a while, it's probably no news to you at this point that PC gaming is extremely expensive. But the real question is, does it have to be? In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the Bengu KM1 wireless gaming mouse. This mouse comes in at a very cheap price of $25 on Amazon and claims to be a lightweight honeycomb design that's good enough for gaming. In the box, you're gonna get the KM1 gaming mouse, of course, along with a very short micro USB cable to recharge the battery. So no type C cable on this one, but for $25, it's sort of expected. And then the mouse does only come in this black color, although it does have RGB lighting, but more on that later. And like I mentioned on Amazon, they do claim this to be a lightweight honeycomb design. And yes, where it is indeed a honeycomb design, I wouldn't say it's exactly lightweight. The KM1 is actually gonna come in at about 130 grams, where yes, that's probably not the heaviest mouse I've ever used for gaming. It is a bit heavier than probably what you'd want for any sort of competitive fast movements that you're gonna need for you know, any sort of competitive shooter or, or various things like that. Where for example, the Razer Viper Ultimate that I use is actually only gonna come in at 74 grams. So basically any sort of like flagship gaming mouse for the most part is gonna be quite lighter than this $25 one that you're gonna get on Amazon. Now once again, that's probably expected, but to claim that it is a honeycomb design and that it is lightweight because of it is a little far-fetched in my opinion. So if it wasn't a honeycomb design, it would probably be pretty much unusable at that point, for me at least. The actual feel of the mouse is solid enough. It does have that sort of expected cheap plastic feel, but once again, for $25, it's not a major complaint for me. And it does actually fit in my hand surprisingly well. It feels pretty decent. The left and right buttons actually feel surprisingly decent for the price. And while they're a little loud, it's not actually as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Now with actual feel, the mouse falls short the most for me is gonna be on the scroll wheel and the side buttons. So these side buttons here are actually quite clicky and annoying and they're, they're kind of spongy feeling as well and they do stick out from the mouse quite a bit. So I could see myself accidentally hitting those buttons when I'm not trying to quite often. Along with the scroll wheel, it is very smooth actually. But the problem with that for me is, is I could see myself, uh, for example, like on a first person shooter, I might have my, my weapon wheel on the scroll wheel to switch weapons. I could definitely see myself swapping weapons unintentionally all the time with this thing. There's no really defined click with it. And then just so you guys can get a pretty good idea of what this sounds like, I will be doing a quick sound test. So I'll see you back in a second. This mouse is also gonna have a couple adjustable settings. You have the three different DPI settings, which is 800, 1600, and 3200. So a decent range, I'd say. And then this mouse also does have a few different settings for the RGB, which is controlled on the button on the bottom here. So you can basically have it cycle through lights, you can have it flash, uh, turn the lights off, it's entirely up to you. So for $25, it's actually pretty nice to have that feature as well. Now let's go to the bottom of the mouse. Another area where it really falls short for me is gonna be the feet of the mouse. They're pretty small and just absolutely do not glide smoothly at all. In fact, it feels terrible and it actually feels like it's scraping against my mouse pad, which is a huge no-no in a gaming mouse, especially one where you do have to slide it around a lot. So once again, like competitive games, or really most games, honestly, it just does not glide smoothly at all. Now, all that being said, you're probably wondering how is the KM1 for actual gaming though? as they do advertise it as a gaming mouse. Well, I got some bad news for you guys. This mouse was pretty much almost unusable for me. The mouse runs on a 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection that Bengu claims to be stable and precise, while in fact this mouse is neither of those things. So I mainly tested this out on Warzone and I basically could not use it at all. So if I had to ever 
slide it to the left or the right really fast or really in any motion. It was a pretty good delay, probably like half a second before my guy on screen would actually make any sort of movement. So that being said, I actually unfortunately would never recommend this mouse for anyone that was trying to purchase it to actually play games. And unfortunately, I could really only recommend this mouse if you're just gonna use it for basic, typical PC everyday use and you kind of just want that cool gaming look as it does look decent, it does have a cool design and it's got cool lights. It's just unfortunate that they're basically promoting this as a budget gaming mouse when in fact, I don't think that anyone could really benefit from using this on any sort of game. So there you have it guys. I feel like that sort of answered the question. No, you should not skimp out on your gaming mouse. I mean, for $25, you're almost better off just you know, if you don't have the money right now, hold off and get something for 15, 20, $30 more, and you're gonna be in a lot better of a boat. I'm just actually still pretty shocked that this specific mouse that I reviewed today has such high reviews on Amazon. I think it's sitting at about four and a half stars and almost 800 reviews. And it just kind of baffles me that more people haven't had the same experience as I have as this mouse is, is not intended for gaming, I can tell you that right now. Anyways, for those of you who stuck around until the end, I greatly appreciate it, and I just wanna let you know we do have all of our links to our social media along with our new Discord server down below in the description if you wanna go check those out. Other than that, my name is Brennan, and if you wanna see future content on tech, games, movies, to literally anything nerdy in between, make sure to subscribe to Digital Cynics. Peace.